What's up, my devil? Since they tuned in with another video for you. So this week we're gonna hit the S and P 500 yet again. Uh, but I mean, shocker, right? But I really thought I might do another video on something else this week. But it's just too much inter interesting price action that's important to any market that you are trading. If you're not trading in this market that I just can't avoid it. Not to mention, I posted this monstrosity of a chart that you're looking at right here to Twitter earlier today, and it didn't get much love, which was surprising to me because it's packed with such juiciness, right? Uh, but Twitter's, you know, Twitter's funny. Twitter's real funny. Uh, you got to keep it clean and simple and and put the info on there as well. It's, um, But, you know, too much info and the brain turns off the Twitter brain, right? But you guys here on YouTube really like to get in deep with that stuff. So I said, and it was interesting to me. So I just said, hey, there's a lot to talk about on this. Post it on Twitter. Uh, should I make a video? And that got way more feedback than the chart. So let's just go ahead and wipe it clean and we'll go through it real quick. I'm not going to rehash everything that we've been talking about on this chart. I'm going to try to keep it relatively short and simple and sweet to pack in what we've talked, you know, just the update. And if you really want to know the overall thoughts on things you can just go back and watch last week's video or the really most of the videos lately where i've keep zooming out and recapping no need to do that this time let's just clean it up also your boy is trying uh i'm sure you've noticed or at least some of you have noticed by now trying uh no music in the background let me know hey, shoot me with a comment in the bottom let me know what you think um and while you're at it just go ahead and click that like button and, and subscribe of course if you're listening but also for those of the, you that come around um, and are familiar with hearing me with music in the background, I'm trying without. Tell me, does it make me? Um, does it make me seem off? Does it make me seem? Is it better? Is it easier to focus? Let me know. Just trying something new. So let's just zoom out. So for the moment, let's just again. I'm not going to recap. So let's just go ahead and ignore the Elliott wave count. Um, do know, no need to make a comment like you know that a triple zigzag is a rare pattern. I, before anybody that wants to question my Elliott Wave knowledge or, you know, ability to pr practice, open um, open invite. You're always open to come on this YouTube channel and have a discussion. I would really like it if you were at least a CWEA, mostly a CWEAM, certified, Elli certifi certified Elliott Wave Analyst Master Designation, because I feel like that's really like when you graduate middle school and then you can start really starting to understand the theory after that that's where you've learned like the very basic rules and guidelines and things like that but then you can start to understand the theory so anytime you want to question it if you actually have knowledge deep knowledge of the theory come on on here you know be good natured i don't care to be questioned at all students do it all the time that's what has made me so good and knowledgeable about this theory is teaching it for so long so anyway moving past that ignore this uh triple zigzag potential we're just going to talk about how uh, last week we did the video and we're tracking quite well with that idea that we would the rally would sustain so it has sustained we had broken out of this base trend channel however it came back tested and now we're moving on but we're not gonna like just shoot straight to the um to the golden corner pocket and maybe beyond remember by the way so the primary expectation was corrective this blue count but it was like just above 50 50 right um <clears throat> so we've now hit this algo and all you all we did was pull from this swing high from this swing low and look for the all the way half back the 50 percent. i can put the levels on <clears throat> 50 6, 1, 8, 65 this golden corner pocket i right wrote right here i'll go short why because the algo shorts there and as you see there's money wick 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 on the four hour chart did break through doesn't mean that there's you know just because there's money on it doesn't mean it's all of the money and it doesn't mean even if it is it's going to beat the bulls uh because this is the bear side algo that would be shooting for targets down here profit algo buy i'll go profit buy meaning they're selling short buying long technically <laughs> to cover that short um so we hit that and we've moved through that's great news right well it is but we're showing stark divergence on multiple time frames and really the higher you go let's see hold on so well i guess you can't go that high because it's such a small move on the daily but still even out here on the daily strong strong divergence i mean beyond the daily it's just not gonna it's just gonna be noise but you know daily all the way down to one hour and even below 
every I mean just multiple time frame multiple pivot divergence usually a strong indication that we will get a pullback sometimes when you really get that strong indication it just actually moons but way way more often than not it goes it pulls back right so in addition to that we do have the algo short right and when I when I say moons it probably moons to this algo it's short and then if it gets through there that's when shit really like if it gets through the 65 I flip that's I'm gonna flip but Let's slow down. Let's not go there yet. If we go to the slow stotch out here on the higher time frames, it's a la it's more of a lagging indicator. A sell signal is met when the Andrews pitchfork, normal Andrews pitchfork median is met at an overbought slow stotch. Simple, simple, very powerful goodies I'm giving you guys. Write that down. Slow stotch. Regular Andrews fork, pitchfork. Okay, so among those confluence factors, we then have, in addition to showing this slow stash, we have that we have rejected on the median several times now. Now, of course, the, what is it? I think the third trading principle is that we will move when, when price reaches a median, it will typically move through and around that median before it moves on several times. Well, it's been doing that. And to move on in the upward direction would be quite difficult for this median. So it's just looking quite toppy. Now, we haven't reached. We are beyond the one-to-one. -one, so we are beyond the typical AC relationship for a, a zigzag. However, we have not reached the 1618, which would also be right in that golden corner pocket. Uh, for a wave three relationship, which would be the bullish alternative to this red ABC, it'd be a one, two, you know, one, two, three, four, five. So it really, I mean, it, and I had said this before that if this is a bull move, I would want it to really get way through here for several reasons. One of which that we have a leading diagonal with a sideways style two after that, which is uncommon after a diagonal. Uh, this, this would really, you think, if it's going to sustain, propel you for quite some time. This bottom, this is a strong bottom to sustain. If it does, sometimes they fake out. Leading diags don't happen all that often, but leading expanding especially. So, but this market has been prone to fake us out. You know, everybody thought this, well, everybody who practiced Elliott Wave thought that this was going to be a three and play. Oh, see, Elliott Wave's not not that good. Eh, yeah, it's just it's it's they, that's why they call it guidelines, probable expectation. It happens way more than it doesn't. These probable wave relationships, right? But you know, way more than it doesn't could be sixty percent to forty percent, and it, you know, in a wave three to to one, it's the with the C of a zigzag being extended, it's way less than I would say forty percent. Anyway, carrying on. What we don't have here is super clear counts. And, and the S&P likes to do this. It likes to do sometimes, especially around this degree, this one hour out here about the size that we're looking at, the, the impulses like to, the motive waves like to get tricky. They like to have, you get these deep retracements mixed in with all these shallow retracements, deep swift. And then people are like, oh, that's, it's fucked. It's going, it's going to go down forever. I love trading bull markets with it when this happens because all the sh you know a lot of people i know love to short and they always think that like the world's gonna end especially when it's been an uptrend it's all-time highs every day they're like they see one of these and they're like i'm short to zero and it's like i'm i'm long <laughs> it's fun. anyway um there's always somebody on the other side but they they get kind of tough to read so what we have to do is be very aware when we see a, a potential and right now so we're seeing potential for a pullback here Right, this just with the overbought, just with the the median, just with the the algo short side, and then of course, one thing. See, I didn't include this on the Twitter chart, which it's glad we're doing a video. Let's get out here on our VPVR tool. Look at us right here. Oh wait a second, let's make sure that doesn't readjust. For some reason, I thought we were above that. Right here at the point of control. So an area of resistance and this is going to be resistance all the way up to the 618 and then of course these low volume nodes they either work as an area of resistance or just a open window to blast through 
I, I feel like this would be, you know, climbing through all of this big volume and then hitting that low volume area of, let's say, non-acceptance of price. With the algo short side, I think that this would be a pretty strong flip. And so, and again, until we get through here, I'm not flipping my bias. Uh, but we get through, I'll definitely flip. Uh, because if we do get through, we're getting all the way up to here. And then, you know, then we're starting to get to that overextended three bigger than one six one eight that I said that I would expect in this environment with this nice bottom. So unpack that real quick, play it back if you have to. Um, but what we have now is that uncertainty, the way that these, these waves unfold. But what we do clearly see is that we have one, two, three, four, five swings, external retrace, one, two, three, four, five swings on two similar magnitude waves, right? So we can go ahead and channel them. Look at that. They channel just like a zigzag. So they could be a three wave move, which means it could be a resolution of something. But two, that doesn't make any sense. A diagonal, a three wave? Well, maybe, first of all, diagonals are shit. And maybe this is a three wave in here somehow. Like I always tell the students, don't, don't bet your lunch money on leading diagonals until it's after the fact, I do believe this is a leading diagonal. Um, I do believe that we will resolve an impulse, but you need to be aware when you see a z potential zigzag finish at all times, all the always. Okay, just be aware. Take it to note. Okay, so we don't really feel we feel like we do have two. That's the best Elliott wave count within here, I believe strongly. Of course, you could throw me your alternatives, but I'll tell you, I consider. Well, I'll just say no. Because that happens all the time. Well, did you think about this? Did you think about this? Yeah, I, yeah, I did. Usually, very rarely, I will. Someone will shoot me something. Say, ah, I didn't think about that. Or what happens sort of more often is, oh, I, you know, I had that count, and then it slid out of probable expectation, and then you know, based on other things sliding out, it would have slid back in, but had forgotten. Um, which reminds me about another chart that we might do a video on. Um, anyway. Again, channel it, all, all these things that show potential for completion. But we don't want to necessarily, you know, even look for, say, one, two, one, two with an uh, expect, expected 50 to 618 pullback for the second two, just because this market, again, likes to do these very shallow twos. This one was like 382. Again, 50 to 618 being probable expectation, not even 382. So what I would like to do here is propose that we run up the algo series. So I'll save you the time without going through the little mini swings throughout. And I'm going to go right there. And just suffice to say, that's an algo all the way up to this big one. And then so we'll pull back. We'll, we'll stay there, right? The series finished. If you remember, you're going to have to watch my algo training video. This is actually one of the two tweaks, um, but we get entry here. Um, let's just get off the 382 because we don't care about him and Algos. Target. So, by whole series finish, series finishes. That series breaks, starts a new series off the original swing. These are the receipts, boys. Don't come at me with uh, any basic knowledge. This is, we're talking in depth here. So, one two let's see oh wait and then we got to throw target two so now we hit target two and have gone through target two through target two negative six one eight so we will set up for an expansion an extension pull potential this is so this is for me because if this doesn't work out, say we do top, we're just assuming we do top here. If this extension pull doesn't work out, that means we're going to break back down into this base trend channel and in this high volume or not volume, but it, this is an important area, right? So should we break through this, especially back through this pitchfork? Boy, that's it. You, you, we break into so this comes back through here, breaks this algo into the here already mm, looking looking kind of rough we break through this pitchfork that's that's game over i mean we can throw the median on this guy and of course that's another potential thing to grab it but i mean once we get through all this especially that that's we're at that point continue down for new lows 
Um, but right now, so we don't know necessarily, um, especially the way that this broke, that there will be 100% money on this um, extension pool. But I'm about as confident as I can be because, and when I say that, because of the extent to which we broke through the second target. Watch my training video. Anyway, um, <clears throat> I'm almost certain there's going to be good money, algo money there, just regular market money there. It's a very important spot. Look at this. Look at this horizontal support, right? Pivots here, pivots here, pivots here, pivots here, you know, pivot here. The market tends to like to remain to pivot in those areas. So it's gotten through and now it could be potentially come back to pivot up. So I would certainly take that for a long trade. And then if it breaks, I'm not, I'm not trying again. I'm not going to get chopped up because at that point I'm going to look to see if we return to this area and get out or really return to this area. And really at that point, I'm going to be short bias probably and really especially get outside of this pitchfork. But that's a, you know, that's basically it. It's a very simple algo series. I just wanted to walk you through how I arrived at that location. Um, yeah. So that's it for this week, boys. It's it's an important spot. The next trade, I do believe it's a good trade, is right here. Right back. So this POC has now gone down just because we zoomed in. But, you know, just that perspective, it is the POC. But out here... more important the the, the it's topping at a bigger point of control so we zoom back in but it is important that's a good as we zoom back in this is above really where we want to be so yeah i mean maybe we get left in the dark and that's one way that we would you know okay we're waiting for a pullback the retest of this channel retest of this extension pull 50 it happens sometimes you just gotta watch Let's get way in there and see if there's anything more aggressive. I wouldn't. I, I personally wouldn't. Just because of, again, what we saw with the potential resolution in here, right? So I at least want to give it a chance to give me an honest correction of this wave. So an honest, adequate retracement. <clears throat> We're going to want to break out of this channel which really, I guess <laughs> that's not going to be hard to do because we're right on the edge of it. But you want to break out it with some, you know, seriousness and get a nice three wave. Look, even this one, very shallow, still get your perfect three wave. I mean, this theory, you know, to th people say, ah, oh, you know, Elliott wave's not great for low time frame. Bullshit. You can get all the way down. on. <laughs> Hold on. I love when I see people say that, yet they claim to be like, Masters of the theory. What's this? <clears throat> one, two, one, two, three, four, five, three, four, five. What's that? What's this? We're on the one minute chart. You know? What's this? One, two, three. One, two, three. We've got a double zigzag. X in the middle. Breaking it up nicely. <clears throat> this shit's easy, guys, on all time frames. I like it. I like the lower time frames even better, to be quite honest with you. I think the largest time frames are where you get the most fuckery. I mean, I think the theory is strong everywhere, but you just have to know what you're doing. All you got to do is watch these videos and you'll keep learning. Join the Discord, watch my training videos, even better. All right, whatever you do, I'll talk to you next week. Actually, no, I won't. I'll be out of town next week. But after that, maybe, just maybe, I'll record more videos. So, again, let me know in the comments what you think about the no music in the background. Um, and of course, if you stay, if you made it to the end, you're, you know, be the stay at the, uh, stay till the end gang and hit me up with a comment on that too. All right, boys. And you know, and while you're here, go ahead, like, and subscribe to out.